Thomas, I'm, I'm uh, interested, on Silicon Valley, how much control do you have over the funny moments? I'd say it's fairly substantial. I mean, I, we're all allowed to try things, and sometimes they might be like, hey, not for this. <laughs> but that's mainly because they've got a bird's eye view of the episode, and it's like, in their head, it's running like 45 minutes, and they've got to get it down. Or that it just isn't funny. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like I have a fair amount of contribution, and either it's in the moment or pitched before we roll. But yeah, I would say the character is very much an amalgamation of my contribution plus everybody else's, as well as all the little bits in between. Do you, do you get to improv at all? Yeah. Improv on that show isn't about rewriting a scene or like creating a whole new storyline. A tangent may evolve, but it's more about like character color or finding a little moment that's like, oh good, that's our little out to get to something else. Mm -hmm. I mean, a guy like Zach Woods, who's an incredible improviser, his character in the pilot is just like a guy who worked at Hooli, who was taken over to our side. But it's all, the, all his little improvs that didn't even make it into the show that everyone was like, oh, I know how to write for you now. And now he's become this very you know, weird guy with a lot of hidden secrets that's just pretty much come out of him and then people seeing that and then like writing for them. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, fuck. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Whoa, you okay there, Richard? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. Sorry, can't really throw it any slower. Give it another cut, Richard. Uh, no, I'm fine. I don't want to. Uh, maybe someone else wants to. Who's next? If someone has to go, I'll go, but it seems very frightening. How about a most mortifying audition? Auditioning for SNL is so nerve-wracking. You get your three characters or three impressions or whatever you want to do. You have such a limited time to do it. You're on that stage where you've seen every Saturday and it's, you know, Lorne Michaels and the crew and everybody and it could very easily happen where you're just up there sweating and no one's laughing. Like, Well, they generally don't laugh. I mean, they did for me, but like, <laughs> <laughs> they were howling. They were on the, they were on the floor. <laughs> but it was also an honor just to audition. I think that's one of those shows where you're like, it's its own badge of honor, you might say. Yeah, the, the <laughs> failed badge of honor. I would like to know, who are your dream comedy collaborators, aside from everyone sitting at this table? Uh, I would say Jim Carrey, but Jim Carrey in a Truman Show or Eternal Sunshine kind of way. Yeah. Jim Carrey's the best. And he can do everything. He can do everything, yeah. And then on the other side of the spectrum, uh, Wes Anderson. I would, that would just be like such... <laughs> Mm -hmm. That would be just crazy. After seeing Budapest so many times, just yeah. being like, oh, how can I get in such a particular dollhouse world? Oh. <laughs> and I need to see your best or worst impression of someone. I've been really into going down a YouTube wormhole of Paul Lind lately. And so one of his bits will be, you know, he's on Hollywood Square, so the guy will be like, Paul, what makes a baby chimp cry? And he'll, he'll say, hmm. Finding out that Tarzan swings both ways. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, just like, it's so hammy and crazy. And he's like, yeah, he makes the craziest. Yeah. And like, oh. all, all like the straight men of like the 60s are like, he's so colorful. <laughs> Bless him. And the wives are like, I'd leave my husband for you. And he's like, yeah. Just, he's so incredible. Love Holland. <laughs>